Hello and welcome to another episode. In today's episode, I am going to be explaining what is an event in JavaScript. But before we get started, if you are new to my channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That really helps me if you want to support my channel. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing you can do if you want to get notified every time that I upload a new video will be to hit that ring bell. That way you will always get a notification every time that I am uploading new content. Okay, so being that said, let's get started. Okay, everybody, so to get started in today's episode, I need you to open the same website that we have been using to code. Um, I also need you to open MDN, and in MDN, you're going to type in the search box, the keyword event, okay? And just pick the first article that you find in there because we are going to read this in just a moment. Um, and of well, just make sure that you have open as well the code that we have been using so far um, to, you know, play around with examples here and teaching you how to use the, the, the JavaScript code itself with the DOM, right? Well, now that you have all your tools open, first and foremost, um, let's go ahead and let's clear out what is an event in JavaScript, okay? So going back to MDN, First, let's just read here a little bit, and then I am going to explain you in my own words what an event is, okay? So it says here, the event interface, it represents an event which takes place in the DOM, okay? In the document object model. So an event can be triggered by the user when the user uh, is clicking the mouse button or typing, um, let's say, uh, or, or tapping a keyboard, or it's generate, uh, or generated by AIs to represent the progress of an asynchronous task. Now, I know this portion right here is very advanced, so just don't worry about it. Um, it can also be triggered programmatically, such as by calling the element um, dot click and then parentheses uh, method of an element. So you also can use it by defining the event and then sending it to a specific target using event target dot dispatch event. Okay. So it's getting very technical now, you know, the explanation. Let me just explain you in my own words what an event is. So here in JavaScript, an event is an action, okay? First and foremost is an action that will take place either in the browser uh, or let's say on a web page, such as, let's say as an example that you click a button right? When you're clicking a button to, I don't know, let's say that a page has multiple, um, multiple buttons there to go to one page one, page two, page three inside of the website, then you are, every time that you're clicking the buttons in that page, that is considered an event. Okay. Now let's say that you are in a game and then let's say that you're playing that game. Let's say like Mario, right? And you, in order to move the little, um, avatar, let's say Mario, um, use your keyboard, right? For that um, video game, saying that the example is in the web browser, right? Typically they will use key, um, they will use keys from your keyboard to control the avatar, either to move it forward, backwards, to jump, right? Like pressing, I don't know, the arrow up, arrow down, etc. So that is also considered an event. Every time, let's say that I hover over something here, you see how when I hover over MDN, I see HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and then when I hover over it, I also can see kind of like a different color each time uh, that I hover over each, um, let's say HTTP or JavaScript or CSS, um, uh, it, it, it's happening something. So all of these are considered and are called events, okay? This is what it's called an event in JavaScript. And it's an event that it's happening, again, it could happen on the web browser itself, or it could happen inside of the, of the, of the document, which is this thing right here, right? The DOM. So how many types of events? This was one of my questions when I first, when I was first learning this is how many types of events are there? Because I just mentioned a couple of them, right? When you click something, when you hover over something, um, well, there's another one that it's, that happens when you scroll. Like if I scroll here down, you see I'm scrolling an event is, occurring, right? So this is another type of event. So there are a whole bunch of them and there is no per se, like a specific list of events. 
So you are going to have to, um, you know, just make some research depending on what you want to do. Right. But there are many, many types of events. Just so you know. Now, you might be asking yourself, how would I handle this events then in my code in JavaScript? How will I make, um, I don't know, something do something else? Right. <laughs> so that's what I'm about to teach you right now. And for that, we're going to use um, a method called event, um, at event listener. OK, so now on MDN, I want you to type in the following. I want you to type in at let's type it in here at event listener. Okay, so this is the first article right here. It says at event listeners method. So I want you to click in there. This is going to be the method that we are going to be using when uh, we want to uh, control or make something happen whenever we do something in the website. Okay, so the at event listener method of the event target very 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 important of the event target interface, set up a function that will be called whenever uh, the specified event is delivered to the target. OK, so the add event listener is very easy. It's not as complex as they're explaining it in here. So I will show you how it could look like. There are a couple of syntax that you will see for this. Um, first is add event listener, the keyboard, right? And then you open parentheses. You can either um, do the type in here, whether if it's, let's say that you click something, then you're going to specify that in here. If you hover over something, then you will specify here in the type as well. If you, let's say, um, are controlling a, a key, um, let's say a key on your keyboard, then you're going to specify that in type in here as well. Then in here where it says listener, typically you will use a function, okay? And then there are some other va variations where you will use options and then you're going to use use capture. So let me uh, just explain you and by showing you an example here into our code in what is all this. So the first thing we're going to do is go back to our document. And uh, in today's episode, I already have the, the console open because I want you to see uh, what is going to happen, right? Whenever we do something here in the website. So let me just go ahead and let's open back up our code in here. So let me just open this up. And the first thing uh, that I want to do will be to create a button in here. OK, so let me just create a button and I'm going to give this button an ID of my button. I'll just call it my button. OK, and then uh, I'll say click me something easy, <laughs> right? So let's uh, save uh, this information into our code and now let's hit refresh. OK, so here is the button that we just created. If I click on this button right now, nothing happens, as you can see. I'm clicking on it. Nothing is happening. There are no alerts or there's nothing. Right. So in order for me to have something happening whenever I click on this button, what I'm going to do is go uh, back into my JavaScript code and add an event listener to it. Um, but first, I don't like the way or the place where the click me button is located. So let me just let me just do a couple of line breaks in here. OK, oops, and it's not here. Let me just make sure I set this up on top. Let me just add three of them. So let's hit save and now let's go back to our code and let's hit refresh. There you go. So we're going to have the click me button in there. OK. OK, so uh, going back to our JavaScript code in here. Uh, let's open this up and let's go back to JavaScript. What I want to do now and is the first thing that I want to do is the following. I am going to select my button in JavaScript. Now, you already know how to do that. I hope that you're an expert at this point, <laughs> but it's very simple. Um, what we're going to do is use uh, uh, const to create um, a variable call my uh, button. Yeah, let's let's just do my button here. I will capitalize that and then let's make this equal to um, OK, you know this by heart. So document whoops document. OK, document that. Get element by ID. There we go. And then the ID that we are going to select is call my button. In order to make sure we don't have any mistakes, I'll just copy this and paste it in here. 
Okay. So we just selected the button right now here and we um, save it in this variable. Okay. So now the next thing uh, that I want to do is the following. I am going to add an event listener. Okay. So let's do that. Okay, so now we're going to add the event listener. So that will be button. We select the, 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 my button that we just created. So my button right there and then dot, and then we're going to add an event listener. So add, right, event, there you go, event listener. And then we are going to open the parentheses. Now remember that on event listener, we have the following syntax, right? So I'll just explain you the syntax real quick. Now we are going to use the type inside of the parentheses. So the type that I want to say here is going to be a click. Whenever I click in this and then I separate this by a comma, um, as you can see, it's being separated by a comma. So when I click on this and make sure you use quotes for the word, the keyword click, um, I want a function to happen. So we can either create the function inside of the parentheses or we can just create a function outside and then just call the function inside. So first I'm going to create the function inside of the parentheses and then I'll show you how to do it outside. Okay. So when we click in this, let me add a function. Uh, we're going to create a function and then uh, let's go ahead and open brackets because that's the way that we create a function. If you don't remember, go back to study our functions chapter. Um, and then we are going to simply say to this function console.log and then we just say console.log. Um, let's just say, okay, let's just say button was click. You did it. Or let's just say you did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. You added an event. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So we, um, again, let's uh, recap this. So you created, um, you created first the variable where you selected, right? The, the, this button right here that we created. Now, the next thing you did was, uh, use the, my button variable that we just created. Then you added dot at event listener, which is a method inside of the DOM, right? At event listener. And then whenever uh, we're saying in parentheses, whenever we click, uh, this button, right? Then this function will be executed. Now, just remember that this portion is the function and then we close the parentheses, right? So the parentheses starts there and then it ends here. Let's just close this out. I'm going to hit save in here and then we're going to go back to our code. Now let's hit refresh. And now this time, whenever I click the button, something should happen here in the console, okay? Specifically, it should happen this. It should say, you did it. You added an event, right? So let's go ahead and let's hit uh, the button right here. So let's click on it. And there you go. So you did it. You added an event. Now, if I click on it again, and now it's telling me I click it two times. And then if I click it a hundred and whatever many times I click on it, then it, it'll tell me how many times I click on this button in here. Okay. <laughs> so that's uh, how you add an event uh, listener here. That's how you add an event into your JavaScript code. Now, I told you there's another way to do it so that you don't get confused and you add a whole bunch of things here. We can remove the function outside of the parentheses. Let's say we can grab this function and then we can type in the function um, outside of the parentheses. And then we just have to give it a name, of course. The, this function is, is going to be called, let's say, my function. OK, we, we're going to call this my function. So that way I don't have to type the entire function inside of the parentheses. That way I have it outside and then I just uh, use the keyword click. So to specify that whenever I click on this, this will happen. And then I will simply just call my function in here and I'll say my function. There you go. So my function. OK. Now I'm going to hit save if I hit refresh here. This time when I click the button, the same thing should happen. So let's hit the button and there you go. You did it. You had an event. So you see how this way it works too. Now I prefer it this way. <laughs> okay, because the function is outside and then I don't see a whole bunch of things inside of the parentheses. Um, but if you are in a rush and you just want to do something real quick, then you can do it like that. Now I'm just showing you things that are happening in the console whenever we click in here, right? 
but uh, you can also alert stuff to your window and I will cover that in another chapter. But today I just want you to be to get very familiar with um, with the events that you can add in here. Now, another thing we can do, and we're going to use uh, this uh, same portion of code that we have written. Um, another thing you can do is, is saying, let's say we are going to change the click. Instead of clicking on it, we're going just to assign a keyword mouse over. That's uh, the keyword for this mouse over. And then whenever I hover over the button, instead of when I'm clicking on it, um, something is going to happen here to our console. So I'm going to save this. Now I'm going to hit refresh. So now I am not going to click on the button. I'm going just to hover over it. Okay, so let's hover over it. And there you go. You see, I hover over it once, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, how many times how many times you hover over it? It'll tell you in here. Okay. Now this um in this case I didn't have to click on the, on the button. I just hover over it. Now another um event that you could see is when you use your your keys in your keyboard, right? So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's say that I want uh, the console to tell me if a key was pressed, right? So if a key uh, was pressed, we are going to be using something that it's called key down, right? If the, if the key is being pressed. So let me just go ahead and just refresh the page. So this is this gets erased. And then let's, since I already deleted the, the keyword mouse over. Now we are going to use another keyword and this keyword is going to be this keyword is going to be key down. OK, now the question here might be uh, so we are going to be using the key down and this is going to tell me when the key is down. OK, so it could be any keys because I'm not specifying which specific key on the keyboard I want, um, you know, to use. So it could be any key, but this is just to give you an idea that you can also add an event when you actually press a key. So we're going to use for that key down. So what's going to happen if I click, let's say here in any place in the website, let's just make sure I hit refresh and I save that out. So what's going to happen is that let's say if I click here right now, I'm pressing a whole bunch of keys and nothing is happening, the, happening in the console. Now, in order to make this work, I need to make sure that I click on the button first. And then once I have clicked on this button, then I can press my keys. And there you go. You did it. You added another event. OK, so I am pressing a whole bunch of keys and you see how it's running. Now, if I press outside of the button again, now I'm not selecting the button. Nothing is changing and I'm still typing in my keyboard a whole bunch of things. If I click on the button again in here and I start typing things out again, it's it keeps on moving, as you can see. OK. So that's another event that you can add when you type something on your keyboard and you can be very specific in the type of keyboards that you want to select. Um, so what I strongly recommend you to do is go to the event listeners and just read here a little bit more in how to use this and how many um, events you can use in order to make um, the website interactive, in order to allow the user to use certain things in your keyboard or, you know, doing them in their in the mouse when they scroll, when they hover, when they click, when they press something um, so that, you know, your website uh, can become more interactive, which is the main point of JavaScript. Right. <laughs> so. So, yeah, so those are those are events. So to make a quick recap, an event is something that happens when a user um, gets into your website, right, or in the browser. And it, it wants to either click, um, it wants to, let's say, drag, uh, drop, it wants to scroll down, scroll up or do whatever they want to do in the website. So that specifically is what an event is. And I already show you how to use um, the at event listener method in order to make sure that you manipulate this in the DOM. OK, so I hope that this chapter was very helpful for you today. Um, if you have questions, remember, you can always leave them in the comment section below and I will take time to reply as soon as I can. And also remember to study. I need you to read MDN and I need you to get familiar with the many type of, um, events that there that are out there and how you can use them. Learn about their syntax because the syntax is very important. Um, and how, and, and you know, the rules that they have, some of them will have rules for, um, I don't know, let's say capitalization or maybe a syntax where you can add a comma, a dot or whatever the case might be. 
JavaScript is very, very extensive. So um, we cannot cover everything in the course, but you have to read. You have to read and get familiar with at least the basic and main concepts so that that way, whenever you want to do something, you know where to look for things and you know um, how to apply those things into your code to make a, what you want to make happen, right? <laughs> okay, everybody. So that was it for this episode. I hope you liked it. Remember, if you like this video, it'll be very helpful if you click that thumbs up. That really helps me out. And if you want to get notified every time that I upload a new video, you can hit that ring bell. And remember that you can always ask Lixie. Bye, everyone, and see you again in the next episode.